everyone, and welcome to the 65 Summit AI Unleashed. For this Enterprise App Spotlight, I'm joined by Chris Leone, Executive Vice President for Oracle's Application Development, on how AI agents are shaping the future of organizations. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Pleasure to be here, Mal. Good to see you. Good to see you. So Oracle has introduced a range of AI agents across its applications. Can you share a specific example of how Oracle AI agents have improved a key process for employees or managers, perhaps in HR or supply chain, and what measurable outcomes have resulted? Sure. Um, you know, good, good, good news is we kind of started with a, what I would call crawl, walk, run kind of approach. Um, we've been delivering generative AI services for the last you know, 16, 15, 16 months, um, where we started what, what I would call kind of the, the crawl phase, where we were helping um, just kind of automate basic processes for, for some of our customers. And I'll give you a few examples of those um, uh, processes like um, pre-building a job requisition based on um, the user's role and a little bit of background on what assignment they're trying to fill, what role they're trying to fill, and being able to take maybe um, a job requisition and create it in a matter of minutes versus maybe a half an hour to 40 minutes for, for a, a manager to create a really compelling job requisition. So if you think about um, just that example, if you know, you're doing five, six, seven, 10,000 job requisitions a year and you're saving 30 minutes per job requisition, um, that starts to add up to, to real dollars. And, and I'll give you another one. Um, as we move kind of beyond the, the what I would call, you know, generative AI services um, work that we've been doing into kind of more the real AI agents. And, and as, as we define AI agents, it's, it's really kind of using the large language model as the brain, the decision maker as to which tool they need to call in order for them to make the right decision. We started building a lot of AI agents across supply chain management, HR, CX, ERP. Um, so I'll give you a, a great one. Um, we, we built a um, maintenance repair advisor agent. And so what this agent is able to do and, and, and how it helps is um, a maintenance work order um, may get generated from a connected equipment, a machine goes down and it generates a maintenance work order. And what usually takes a maintenance technician time um, to evaluate, understand what, what the issue is, maybe look up an error code, maybe look up the service history of this particular machine, and then identify um, who is the right service technician to be able to, to fix that particular um, issue. Instead of doing that in a kind of sequential step-by-step -step manual process, we created a repair advisor, a technician repair advisor that can do all of that virtually. It has access to um, the work order, the maintenance work order, it comes in, it can look at the machine, it can look at the service history, it can understand what the error cones mean from the manual that we've stuck into our vector store. Um, it can identify potential fixes, um, and then it can dispatch a service technician to go fix that particular uh, machine. And so what this can do is lead to better, more uptime um, for these particular machines. And, and as you know, the more uptime you have, the, 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 the less cost you have because your machines are running longer and, and um, you're able to, to save the number of steps. You don't have to have a person engaged every step of the way. So you can save dollars, you can keep the machines up longer, and it can lead to real, real dollar savings. I appreciate you defining what AI agent means to you, because I think throughout the industry that sort of varies. And so that it's really helpful to kind of say like, well, this for us, at least for now, right? Because I think this could possibly change. That's what that means. So you also, Oracle also allows in AI agent studio, you allow for your customers to tailor these AI agents for their unique needs. So how do you see customers using this capability and how do you see that shaping the next wave of enterprise enter automation? Yeah, no, really, really good question. So um, first, as I said, the kind of the crawl, walk, run um, scenario, you know, we started building generative services, AI agents, rag based AI agents where we're, we're using our document store in, in our vector database um, for the last 16 months, as I said. Um, and then um, we, we came to the conclusion that we were using um, an internal set of tools that my development organization, the entire Fusion Applications Development Organization was using um, to build these agents and associate them to business objects and APIs in, in our um, Fusion application suite. And so we decided to turn that over to our customers and partners in the form of what I'll call an AI 
um, IDE or development environment, and that's called AI Studio. So AI Studio is really that ability for not only us to build brand new AI agents, seed them and let our customers configure them and use them, but really allows our partners and our customers to extend what we have or to build agents from scratch. And so, so to answer your question specifically is, um, I think our customers will start with, hey, taking that maintenance tech advisor agent, loading up their, their documentation, um, and maybe at the end sending, you know, adding a step to send a summary at the end of the day um, to their manager about all, all the, you know, maintenance work orders that they may have fixed. So they might take what we have because they're just kind of learning and extend it. But partners, will be able to create um, very, very verticalized industry specific agents because they have a lot of domain knowledge. They have a lot of understanding of what our customers are looking to do and they can just use their imagination and, and the power of what you know agents can really do for, for business. They can really automate um, these processes in ways that we weren't able to do before because they can think on their own, right? They can be more um, probabilistic versus just kind of the way we've always coded everything, which is step by step by step. And we know how it's always gonna end. Now we can let the agent make decisions about what is the right tool for it to use to solve a particular problem or, or a particular use case. And so I think our partners are really gonna be able to really just imagine new types of solutions and really fill what I would call some cracks in, in our processes, maybe even to extend to systems outside of our application and bringing external data sources in order to make the solution that they develop even more robust. And as agents sort of start to take on some of this more routine work, what are you? How are you seeing kind of the the more urgent skills gaps that are emerging for enterprise teams? And and how do you think that organizations should start preparing their people for that today? Another, yeah, it's a really good question. You know, I think and I, what I've seen. Um, Mike and we just came off of a very, very large internal hackathon where we had, you know, um, large part of our development organization really experimenting and building some pretty cool um, agents, um, some super unique. I would never thought of, of those. And um, but um, the skill that I think they all um, first had to understand is what is the unique power of building an AI agent? What can they bring that we couldn't do with some of the technology of the, of the past? What new additional sources of information, new ways to automate new decisioning that these agents, problems that they can solve that we couldn't solve in the past. And so that was the first kind of hurdle they had to get, get by. And once you start to understand, look, I can bring in best practices information, compliance information, marry that with data in our system. I can marry that with internet Internet specific data. I can look at the weather. I can, you know, I can look at, you know, internet searches and bring back different types of information and start to solve problems and not just recommend, but actually take action in our system. So I think the first problem that people need to understand is what is the types of solutions that you can now solve that we couldn't in the past? And then I think the second thing is how to really get your mind around developing these system prompts in order to, to, to really um, ask you know, or tell the agent what it needs to do. So it's really common language, but there's ways to write these prompts that um, are um, very specific to what you want it to do. And there's different ways to go about it. You can start with a very, very complex prompt. I don't recommend that. Or you can start with kind of trial and error. Start with a basic prompt, see if it does, you know, solves this solution that you're asking it to, to do, call the right tools. If it doesn't, add another, you know, step in that prompt. So I think they really need to get their mind around how this, common language, English or whatever language you speak, can drive the behavior of, of these agents. And I think those, those two skills are, are things that people need to develop. Yeah, it's interesting, this like digital workforce, people are going to have to start to learn to work with kind of like a new teammate. As Oracle is enabling more autonomous AI-driven workflows, also having to deal with sort of building this trust between people and AI agents. And that could potentially prove harder to then deploying the technology itself. So where are you seeing kind of that start stop mistakes in organizations, how they can avoid that? What advice do you have on that? Yeah, you know, I, so what I tell my team is, you know, if people are worried, of, you know, are agents gonna replace people? How is that gonna work? You know, what, what I tell my team is, 
we need to take advantage of this technology. Everybody should be at least a 5X employee, maybe even a 10X employee leveraging the partnership that we can have with, with AI, whether it's agents or, or just generative AI services. We all need to be more efficient and more productive in our day-to-day -day work. So, so, that, so that, that, that has to be kind of, kind of first and foremost. Um, and then what I would, I would tell them as far as, um, where they can, you know, where, where, where you know, kind of agents will, will fit in and how you can make sure that you're getting the right answer and the accuracy rate is high enough is first define what that needs, what that needs to be. Um, is the um, error rate 95%? Is that going to be okay for this particular problem? And if it's not, can I stick a human in the loop? And, and we have those capabilities where, hey, look, before I, you know, charge your credit card, before I place this order, before I send out the service technician, do I send it to the supervisor and have him say, yes, this is the right thing to do. So I start to automate these processes kind of one step at a time until I get more comfortable. And then maybe I can take the human out of the loop in that step, take the human out of the loop in that step, and then becomes a fully autonomous process. But the idea and what people have to think about is this is not about job elimination. This is about productivity um, the ability to increase productivity for organizations. So you will start to see small organizations, medium-sized organizations being able to be as productive as very, very large organizations because they're going to be able to take advantage of these autonomous processes. And you can do it step by step, as I said, pulling a human out of the loop to make sure that you're more, more comfortable. I'll give you one more example. It's kind of a short one. Um, we have we rolled out a benefits uh, advisor solution to you know 60 70 thousand people in across our Europe um, organization and it answered questions on benefits or different benefit plans compensation plans and um, the the SVP of HR said you know his comment back was the regulations in Europe for 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 some of these benefit plans is very very complex and even their best benefits advisor has a 85 to 90% accuracy rate. So if we're at 90, 95% accuracy with, with, an agent, with an agent, that's better than where we would be without an agent. You know, so, so you have to take into account what is the accuracy rate and where you want to stick human in the loop in order for you to feel confident in, in the solutions and the answers that you're getting. Yeah, so you mentioned like people should be 5X, 10X, but then there's you can take it kind of a step further with like the value of integrating HR, supply chain data with these AI agents. So how does Oracle's approach to that cross-functional integration help organizations become even more agile and resilient? Yeah, you know, I think I think what it it, it kind of breaks down the, the boundaries uh, and not that we couldn't have done this before. It just makes it easier to grab different pieces of information to help drive decisioning in one part of, of the system. Um, and, and I'll give you uh, I'll give you the, the skills example in um, in the technician repair example. So skills are something we traditionally have in HR. It's a very, very well organized HR process, not something we have traditionally done in our maintenance application. Right. It was very rudimentary. We had a few skills. Now I can easily grab that talent information, that skill information, and go look at what this technician has and be more accurate. Oh, they've worked on this type of CNC machine and they've done it for this many years and they can be come to the top of the barrel versus in the past it was CNC expert and you just stuck them in and maybe they didn't know this particular machine or they didn't know how to fix the particular problem. So yeah. now we can solve these kind of broader problems because we've kind of made it easier to open up the information that we can grab from different parts of our system and even external parts of our system. So we can go outside, like I said, into the internet, into services outside and bring in external information to help make better decisions inside our, our organization. Yeah. So in a way that's not just, you know, the sort of easing the fears of AI taking your job is actually AI is helping to help people like advance in their careers. It's putting them in the right place at the right time and kind of figuring out where people belong. I think that's, that's actually very, yeah, I, I think, I think, you know, where, what it's going to come down to in the next year, six months, nine months is organizations are going to have this kind of productivity dial that they're able to turn up and, and it's going to give them more advantages to say, Hey, look, you know what I can deploy. Maybe, maybe I don't need to deploy 
as many people in this one area. I can turn on a few more agents over here and take some of the people and have them work on this, you know, more cognitive oriented problem that I really need a different type of leader to, to be able to solve. And so they'll be able to, you know, it's kind of elasticity in our cloud. They can turn up elasticity to productivity over here and, you know, move resources over here and give a lot more flexibility to the problems that they can solve, allowing them to solve more problems and not, you know, always having to be the largest organization that could compete in, you know, different industries. So if you had to make one bold prediction about how AI will reshape enterprise organizations over the next, say, five years, what would it be? And what's the most important action that you think leaders should take now? To, to be honest, I, I think in the next five weeks, maybe five months, you know, so it's really hard to think five years out because it really is. Things are changing. Yeah. Things are things are truly changing that fast. You know, what, what I tell my leaders, and I, I literally just sent out a note to all of them. Um, they need to look at a few of their key deliverables that they have to their customer, internal customer that they support. And they need to automate those, um, a couple of those by the end of this fiscal year or this end of this calendar year. And I said, you need to start thinking about, hey, look, these are deliverables that we have. These are problems that AI can solve for us in a much more automated way. Let's go automate those and get to 80, 90% automation and then go to the next step. I'll give you the one example I gave to my strategy team that helps um, enable our field. I said, there's different ways to learn now. It's not a PowerPoint presentation and a webcast that you go have. Um, these these um, AI can create podcasts and they can create these dynamic podcasts where two people are talking and interacting just like we're interacting yeah. from a document or from a PowerPoint and it's different ways to learn. So we, we have to be smarter about how we can deploy these new technologies so people can learn easier. This is how kids are learning in college, right? They go to these websites, they take notes and they get these flashcards and they're still learning the content, but we've made it much more efficient for them to do it. And that's how we need to think about different parts of our organization that we can make more productive. So I've challenged each part of my organization to say, hey, look, you need to think of processes that can be more automated and take advantage of the pattern recognition and, and what these large language models do really well. And let's automate those processes. That's awesome. I love that. I tell my kids all the time, use use all the AI tools that you can, because that will give you the superpowers that you need when you join the workforce. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. And for everybody who has tuned in, thank you for joining us for this Enterprise App Spotlight at the 6.5 Summit. Stay connected with us on social and explore more conversations at 6.5 Media slash Summit. On behalf of 6.5 Media, thanks again. Thanks.